In this video, I'm going to be showing you the basic retouching tools using Adobe Lightroom to make your photos pop. Let's jump into it. I'm going to be showing you my basic workflow for retouching DSLR photos. If you would like to follow along, I put the raw file down in the description below. Now that we're over here in Lightroom, I'm going to show you the basics that I do when I retouch my landscape photography. Now in my Canon T3i, I like to pull out the contrast and the saturation just a little bit so I get to re-add it in in post-production later. Now, Every time I shoot with my Canon T3i, especially around sunset, I make sure that the shadows aren't blown out, or well, the highlights aren't blown out, and there's not any pure black shadows. And so you can see it on the histogram here. And so now we can naturally add in the contrast, and there's nothing that, there's no places on this photo that there is no data at all. We can always pull it back. And so every time I start with my landscape photos, I like to pull the highlights down and I pull the shadows up to about 75. That's just kind of my rule of thumb. Some people pull all the way up to 100 on each, but this is just my kind of workflow. And then I go back in and I retouch it later as we get going. Now, if you hold the Alt key on, on Windows, I don't know what it is for Mac, you can see that the screen's gonna go black and you're gonna see some red appear on the screen. This is what is actually blown out in your photo now because we're retouching the whites. So we're going to pull this back down till we don't see any red on the screen, which is about 43. We're going to uh, mess with the blacks just a little bit. And this is a way to naturally contrast. Um, if you were to pull this contrast slider up here, it's going to contrast the whites and the blacks together. Right here, you're messing with the whites to a percentage that you like and the blacks to a percentage that you like. So you get a little bit more creative freedom when you do that. And also when you do clarity, as I click right here, you're gonna see it does add contrasted well, but it does it in a different way. So each, of each button on here will do a different effect. And so you just gotta play around. Clarity always adds a lot of drama. I like drama and I like high saturation. And so just play around with it. There's no right way to do it, but this is just my workflow that I like to do. We're gonna pull up the vibrance and then we're gonna pull up the saturation as well. And I'd say to about right there and you can see the photos now come into life. Okay, perfect. And so after I pull up the vibrance and saturation, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna mess with the temp and the tint. Um, I just wanna warm this photo up a little bit. I'm gonna say to about right there, that looks really good. Um, no, not really, I don't wanna mess with the temp and the tint. I actually like the way that looks right there. And you can see, yeah, that looks perfect. I usually like to zoom in and out too, just for my, I like to see the colors and the way that they're coming out with the mountains. And that's where like split toning and some other um, coloring, you know, this is like the shadows and the highlights. It can all come to pl into play if um, the temp and the tint aren't really cutting it your coloring and we can get into that on a later date so now i've retouched the basic little section here we're going to go into the into the tone curve and the tone curve i just recently started using and i've really loved it because it's, it adds a lot more contrast in a whole nother way you have complete freedom to contrast and i i just i really love it so we're going to pull this up so we like the Usually the highlights are gonna be the sky and the lights are gonna be more of the overall photo, the sky. It's gonna light up me here, some of the rocks. Let's see what it does here. You can see it's just brightening up some of those bright spots. I think that's looking really cool. Maybe about right there. And now I like to open up the darks personally. And I like to crush the shadows a little bit. It adds a little bit more. And so here's before. We did the tone curve and here's after before and after and you can see if you look in the sky here why i zoom in and out before after and so what i'm going to do now is i'm actually going to tone the lights down a little bit because i'm losing a little bit of this color in those clouds you can see right here but i'm really liking the way that looks 
We're gonna tone that down just a little bit more. Okay, I'm gonna go about right there, I believe. Yeah, that's perfect. And now after I do the tone curve, I'm gonna rework the sky with the gradiated filter. I just like to drag it down a little bit. Nothing too crazy. You just kind of want to highlight the blue and the purples. And if you're shooting around sunset, the blues and the purples. Usually if you're shooting during the day, just the blue. You don't want too you don't want to get too crazy. Uh, just a little bit. To emphasize it. There you go. And so this is before and after. Before, after, before, after. It's just a little bit. Just to kind of retouch in there. And now we're gonna go into the detail. We're gonna skip the split toning. I really like the way that the color is. Now when you do details, it, my basic rule of thumb is the noise reduction right here and the amount here should equal 100. So if this is 75, this is 25. If this is 60, this is 40 and vice versa. However you want to do it, and it just depends. If you're shooting night photos, usually I go about 60-40. If it's during the day and you have an ISO of about 100, which I shot with this one, um, I usually do 75-25 or 80-20 here. And it just depends. I like to see where it's at. And then the masking on here, I usually play with just a little bit. And if you hold Alt and click and drag, you're gonna see it's gonna highlight um, black and white. White is everything that it's gonna it's going to sharpen, and the black is everything it will not sharpen. So I don't want it in the sky. I'm gonna put it to about 15. And now you can see it's all nice and sharp. It looks really good. I'm gonna mess with the color just a little bit. This is just to remove some of the color that's not even. Wow, with the details here. If you pull this way up, it's going to mess with your color. It's gonna um, take away some of the saturation and everything. So just be careful with it, but you can play with it a little bit if your color is uneven, like on my shirt and everything like that. So this is before, after, before, and after with the details. You can see it adds a lot. You should never, um, print a photo that you have not sharpened in that way in my opinion when you're doing digital like this some of you big film guys but then again you won't if it's if it's uh, if it's not digital you will not be editing your photos like this uh, so now we're gonna go into lens correction I usually just click Canon you're gonna see it's going to take out a little bit of the distortion and um, a little bit of the vignette that comes with it. I usually just click it and sometimes you can mess with it and pick your actual lens you shot with and it'll get very precise, but I just like what it does right there. And then always remove chromatic aberration. It's just a very simple thing. And right around here, I, there's a, I had some in the trees and a couple of the ridge lines. I don't know if you can see it, but right here it's just adding a little bit of the purples. It's taking it out and um, if you go too much, if you mess with this amount, you can get really precise with it. But if you were to drag this amount up, you can see in the mountains here, it's taking out the color. And that's mostly what it does. It's the bleed through. You can see it's coming back. And so usually you just want to click it. If you have a lot of chromatic aberration, you might want to mess with the amount a little bit. But I have never gone over about two on there. Now I'm going to pull this up, put a little bit of vignette. And I really think that is perfect. Now go in and add a little bit more contrast, about 12. And I, I would I would leave it about right there. I think that's perfect. Maybe open the shadows just a tiny bit. And usually, I mean, you can come back and mess with this later, but I really, I, I would think this is perfect. Thanks for watching everybody. Make sure to click that subscribe button down below if you want to be notified on future video releases. Give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends and family if you liked it and found it helpful. If you have any questions or want to see a specific tutorial, leave a comment down below. Connect with me on my social media, it's in the description below. And until next time, dream it, create it, and strive for it.